What's good? Friends, welcome back to the Brave New Wear Show. My name's Christian. Ready for some situational comedy? What's the deal with this squiggly mirror? It is a social media phenomenon. A Instagram set piece seen everywhere from Frank Ocean's house to Bella Hadid's house to Lena Dunham's house. It is a piece of furniture that is popping up everywhere from trendy stores to basically every influencer's Instagram page. The why is a little more obvious. It's a squiggly millennial pink colored mirror. It's got those wild lines that are reminiscent of um, vector art, which is like basically the art style of every startup. It, it kind of looks like it was born for our time. So of course the artist must be some like Zoomer, some, some. millennial, something like that. Nah, dog. This mirror was in Coral Lagerfeld's apartment in the 80s. In fact, this design is 50 years old. And the story of this squiggly mirror and the architect slash designer behind it is pretty fascinating. In fact, he might be one of the most underrated designers of our time. And I imagine before this video is over, you'll be asking yourself, what's the difference between Frank Ocean's house and Pee Wee's Playhouse? The answer? Virtually nothing. So this squiggly mirror's actual name is the Ultra Fragola, which means ultra strawberry in Italian. Its designer, Ettore Sosas, was an Italian architect and interior designer slash artist, etc., etc. He was essentially a creative who worked in a wide variety of mediums for decades. His story begins in the early 20th century, 1917, he was born in Austria. His father, an architect, insisted his son would follow in his footsteps and move the family back to Italy so that Sosas could attend the best architecture school. And in his professional career, Sosas immediately began as an architect. Because this is the 20th century after World War II, we're talking about modernist design. And I wanna put this in some context because my last Brave New Chair videos, you could say, have been on modernist design. The Vasily chair, the Eames lounge chair, those are both modern. And this style is defined by a couple of things. It's a reaction to the new pace and the new atrocities of the 20th century. Artists were compelled to create works that responded to this new technologies, the speed of life and culture, and in interior design, that meant for modern interior design, it was streamlined. It was easily mass produced. It was designs that removed the unnecessary. This was the mode. And this is the style that Sosas was expected to work in, being the creative that he was, he didn't let himself get limited by just designing buildings. Much of the work that he's remembered for is his product design. Sosas started working for a company called Olivetti in the 1960s. Olivetti, an Italian product company, would create products primarily for offices. And you can see some of Sosas's early work for them. These typewriters, they're boring, they're regular. This was basically what was expected. It just needed to be functional. However, his first breakout design in 1969 was the Valentine typewriter. This was a kind of a revolution. It was very light and easily transportable. There was a affinity for this product, especially because of its red, vivid color. It was more than just a typewriter, it was a consumer product that people wanted. Working for the Olivetti company into the 70s, Sosas became more and more disillusioned 
by working in product design. He felt like the restrictions hampered his artistic expression. In the year 1970, Sosas first designed the Ultra Fragola, the mirror. It would take another 10 years for the artistic movement that he would start with a bunch of other artists to actually take shape in which the mirror belongs. The Ultra Fragora was more than just a practical mirror. Its curved lines invoked a sense of sensuality. Ooh. Sosa said that life is perceived first by the senses, then by the intellect. His transformation from a modernist architect to this new postmodern style would take full form in 1980, when he would ultimately start a new artistic movement with a group of fellow creatives. One that captured this idea of being creative, being central, being goofy, over just being stri strictly practical or streamlined. Sosas started a new design firm and a new style that they refer to as Memphis Design. The idea of Memphis design was simple. They would be radical, funny, outrageous, and basically the opposite of modernism. Design often featured plastic laminate, insane colors, asymmetrical shapes, and in some ways, a kind of direct contradiction to quote unquote good taste. Described once as a shotgun wedding between Bajas and Fisher Price. And unlike the name, the group wasn't from Tennessee. The name Memphis came from a Bob Dylan song that was playing during a meeting. By 1982, Memphis Design had taken the world by storm with their international debut at a art gallery opening in Manhattan. Looking at some of Memphis Design, it seems really familiar. The aesthetic that people associate as like the stereotypical 80s look. I think you'd be hard pressed to think of any other design phenomenon that could be located as specifically to a group of people. Memphis is probably as influential a design group as there has ever been. Is Memphis solely responsible for things from the original Apple Watch to Miami Vice to the MTV logo? No, nothing could ever be responsible for such a wide range of creative pursuits. But I argue that there's probably no other artistic movement that I can think of that had such an immediate and widespread effect. What's kind of interesting about Memphis design is the speed at which it was adopted. When a trend burns this bright, it burns out quick. By 1988, the Memphis design team had disbanded. The commercial success of selling these insane products had died off. I guess people were ready to move on to a helmet laying 1990s grunge style. But of course, we see the Ultra Fragola, a mirror that is clearly in this mode of design. It's super popular again. My guess is the style of Memphis design is bizarre and eclectic and that kind of works with our internet-fueled, eclectic aesthetics. I wonder if there are more people out there like that who have had such an immediate and obvious impact, but aren't name brand artists or designers. But that is the Ultra Fragola mirror. And if you're thinking about picking one up, they go for around $10,000. So it's a, it's a pretty steep, price but you're welcome to send me one i will provide my address uh, send me a dm if you have one lying around and as always guys i'll catch you later hope you like my new apartment but i got i gotta do some stuff i don't know it's kind of the shadows in here are awfully weird <laughs>